On voyages to the Pacific Islands, scientists learned a great deal about volcanic island arcs like the Mariana Islands. When they returned to North America, they discovered that the rocks of modern island arcs were strikingly similar to ancient rocks in the Pacific Northwest. For Tracy Vallier and his colleagues, the present became the crucial link to the past. They could see firsthand how the older rocks in the Hell's Canyon area form. Those folks who were out there dealing in the deep ocean hardly had any idea, I suspect, to begin with, that they were going to be solving problems on the continents that were so complicated, like what Tracy was working with. But it did happen just that way, and uh, that's, that's progress. The research in the Pacific Ocean continued to solve geologic mysteries in the Pacific Northwest. Geologist Ellen Bishop works in the Greenhorn Mountains of eastern Oregon. This area is known to geologists as the Baker Terrain, which is named after Baker City, Oregon. For years, geologists working in the Baker Terrain could not explain how these rocks form. They are highly altered and mixed up like no other rocks in the region. The mystery was solved when Ellen Bishop was doing research at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. My colleagues at Scripps were dredging the Marianas Trench, looking at ocean island systems in the Pacific. And they kept coming home with the same kinds of rocks that I was finding, except I didn't have to use a ship and a dredge to find these things. I just had to walk through the Greenhorn Mountains, and I came up with the same mysterious assemblage that they were finding in the South Pacific. Once again, the present became a crucial link to the past. Ellen Bishop concluded that the Baker terrain formed at an ancient subduction zone, like the Marianas Trench. Her findings complemented the work of geologists in the nearby Wallawa terrain. When they put their data together, they could see that the two terrains were part of the same ancient island arc. The Wallawa terrain consisted of the volcanic islands in the arc, and the Baker terrain was the site of the subduction zone near the islands. The entire geologic feature is called the Blue Mountains Island Arc. Fossil discoveries in the Wallawa Mountains hinted that the Blue Mountains Island Arc was once an entire ocean away. I'm standing at the ichthyosaur site, and ichthyosaurs are swimming marine reptiles that lived during the age of the dinosaurs. Uh, this particular ichthyosaur fossil was a skull discovered by a high school student, very inadvertently, who stumbled upon it here in these shales. Ichthyosaurs um, like this are swimming reptiles, but this particular one is known from only one place in the world, and that's in China. And that supports the idea that these rocks might have originated very far out in the Pacific, far away from North America. A fossil find in Hell's Canyon proved that the ancient islands migrated far north from their tropical setting. Geologist Sidney Ash, a professor at Weber State University, found the remains of an ancient forest on the banks of the Snake River. The forest grew 175 million years ago, and it looks something like today's forest. It took about 35 million years at the rate of three inches per year for the old islands to move to their new setting. By modern comparison, the San Andreas Fault in California moves about two inches per year. Los Angeles, which is moving north on the Pacific Plate, will line up with San Francisco, 380 miles away, in about 12 million years. Plate tectonic processes like faulting and subduction caused the Blue Mountains Island Arc to move across the ocean. By 130 million years ago, the islands were close to the North American continent. At that time, the west coast was located far inland from today's coast. Ocean waves broke on beaches in western Idaho. The Blue Mountains Island Arc was one of many island groups offshore. Plate tectonics 
gradually close the gap. About 115 million years ago, the Blue Mountains Arc docked with the continent. The collision occurred along a zone that passes close to Riggins, Idaho, near Hell's Canyon. Just east of Riggins, just uh, three or four miles, you come to what's called the suture zone. And you can think of it as, as a, a zipper or something like that, where the continent's been zippered together with these oceanic islands. The rocks of the suture zone were squeezed and tilted during the collision. The force was so great that the mountains of central Idaho were pushed higher by thousands of feet. For millions of years after this suturing event, plate tectonics added new land to western North America. But one of the ancient islands remains offshore today. It is known as Vancouver Island in Canada. This is a land of misty fjords and densely forested mountains. Rugged cliffs rise to 7,000 feet above sea level. Pillow lavas make up many of these cliffs. Like the pillow lavas in Hell's Canyon, these rocks formed under ocean water. High above the lavas, a limestone cliff looks out on a valley. Pieces of limestone are scattered all over the island. Many have fossils that came from the tropics, and some species are the same as those in the Wallawa terrain. Much of Vancouver Island, like the Wallawa terrain, formed in tropical waters before plate tectonics moved it to its present position. The fossils of the Wallawa terrain have relatives even farther north than Vancouver Island. Fossil clams here in the Wallawa Mountains are also found in northern Canada. In fact, many tropical fossils have been collected as far north as Alaska. Geologists search for more evidence to support their exciting new findings. They used many types of geologic investigations, both in the field and in the lab. Paleomagnetism uses the magnetic properties of rocks to determine their location when they first formed. Mass spectrometry reveals the kind of environment that rocks formed in, as well as their ages. A technique called potassium argon dating is also used to determine the age of certain rocks. As scientists had hoped, these studies provided supporting evidence for their new geologic theories. It is now thought that much of Western North America did not form as part of the continent. Large parts are made up of oceanic islands, coral reefs, and other seafloor fragments. These exotic terrains were brought in from the ocean by the relentless force of plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is still changing the face of Western North America. Two crustal plates have collided just offshore of Oregon and Washington. A subduction zone formed, which created a great chain of volcanoes a short distance from the coast. These volcanoes, like majestic Mount Rainier in Washington, have produced some of the most powerful eruptions on Earth. Mount St. Helens unleashed its fury in 1980. The landscape